All right, we are back and we are setting up our light. We're now going to focus on updating our material so that our fluorescent tube appears to illuminate. I do want to mention this. In between videos, I did rebuild my lighting, so we won't be getting that error message anymore. Now, also, in the previous video, I told you that this static mesh had a new material instance constant applied to it. I showed you generally how that was set up and applied. So now, all we need to do is talk to that material instance constant, and we can thereby change the color of the material. So let's start off by grabbing our content browser and we need to locate that material instance constant. Now it turns out I know exactly what package that's stored in. If for some reason you didn't, an easy way to get there is to double click your static mesh, expand static mesh actor, expand static mesh component, and then jump under rendering. You'll actually see all the materials applied to a particular mesh and in this case that's our material instance constant. So you can just click find object in content browser and that'll select it for you. Now, keep that guy selected here inside the content browser, and let's open Unreal Kismet. Now, we need a particular action, a very specific action, to control a material instance in our level. I'm going to right-click. Let's go to New Action. And again, it's just a, it's a matter of knowing what it is you're working with. We know we're working with a material instance, and there's a material instance sub-menu. Now, what we're going to change is a vector parameter. A color parameter has R, G, and B data all kind of considered to be one number, which is a vector. So choose set vector param. Now there's some things we have to set. First off, we need to plug in the material instance we want to talk to. We've already selected it in the content browser. So let's click use selected object in content browser. And we need to give it a param name. Now if you don't know the param name, you'll need to open up your material instance, which just real quick, I'll remind you how to do. If you double click the material instance constant, you'll see vector parameters and the name is light color. I want to show you another trick too. If we expand this, if you just want to make sure that you've got the correct spelling, because spelling is going to be critical, type it all out in lowercase, because you, you might have noticed light color had a capital L and a, uh, a capital C as well. So if we just set this to light color, all lowercase, watch the name when I press enter you'll see it automatically capitalizes. So that means that Unreal was able to see that we already had a property named light color and it made the association and changed the casing for us, which is great. Now check this out. If I just grab this and plug it straight into the used output of our trigger, we've already got a connection. The only thing we need to do now is set the color that we want to change the light to. I'm going to expand our vector value here on, under our set vector params properties. Let's scroll down a little bit. Notice that R, G, and B are backwards here. It's actually B, G, and R. We're going to set red to 1, we'll set green to 2, and we'll set blue to 3. So it'll be primarily blue with a little bit of everybody else in there. And let's go ahead and close out Kismet for just a moment, and let's just give this a quick test. I'm just going to right-click, choose play from here. Now, I'm going to look up at the light. When we hit the switch, tap the E key, blam, the light switch is on. However, as I continue to toggle, it'll just remain on. So we need some way to switch it off. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. All this guy is is just a, a regular node. He just sets a single value. What we need is some way to send a signal out from our use. Basically, when the player uses the trigger, we need to have a switch box, which keeps track of the number of switches and jumps between an on state and an off state. That's pretty easy to set up, but it is going to require that we add a new node in here, and so we have to disconnect one of our wires. Disconnecting a wire is easy. All you do is hold down the Alt key and click on either an input or an output, and bink, the wire disappears. Now, I'm going to move this node kind of out of the way. Let's just slide it over here. Now, again, I mentioned that we need a switch to switch between an on state and an off state. Before we create that, let's go ahead and establish our off state. Because right now what we've done is we've created a set vector parameter which changes our material to make it look like it's been switched on. Now let's make another one which will switch it back off for us. So I'm going to select my set vector param sequence object, press control C, and then control V. Just It's copy paste, just like many other programs you've probably used, such as uh, word processors and we'll move this just underneath the original. 
Now we need to change the vector value here back to black. So select your new sequence object, expand vector value, and I'm going to set R, G, and B to zeros down the board, which sets everything back to black. Okay, now I've got my two options. I just need a way to switch between them. Well, how do you switch between something? Let's right click and go to new action, and it turns out there's a switch submenu. There's a few different types here. There's random switches, which will grab a random option. There's delayed switches. We're just going to do a regular switch. So go under switch and just choose switch. And there's a few things we have to set up here. First off, we need two separate indices, two things that we can switch between, an on state and an off state. And by default, we only have one. If we come under the properties, you'll see a link count by default set to one. Go ahead and set this up to two, and now we get two links. Now, this is how easy this is. Link one, we're going to plug into the on state. Link two, we're going to plug into the off state. So this node is setting the material to on. This one is setting it to off couple of other things we need to keep in mind, but actually, you know what? Let me just show you how this works. So let's go from our used output on our trigger into the input of our switch. We're missing something, but I actually want to show you uh, the effect of what happens when you miss it. Let's just play from here. One, now this is kind of interesting. Uh, our light is already on. That's an interesting problem. But what I'm going to do is hit the E key once. Now that just set the material to its on state. Though it was already on, so that's kind of an interesting problem. And then we can press E again, and that switches the light back off, which is great. But watch what happens if I hit E again. It just turns the light bulb on. The material is no longer updating. Now, the reason for that is that if I jump back into Kismet and select the switch, looping is not switched on. You've got to switch on looping. Looping is what tells the switch to go to link 1, then go to link 2, and then if you hit it again, it's not going to see a link three, so it'll wrap back around to link one. So we're switching on, then off, then on. So let's give this a quick test. Choose play from here. I'll look up at the light. Oops, switches on, switches off, switches on, switches off. Technically speaking, our light switch is complete. And for the purposes of just, you know, sending this level out to some of your friends so that they can just open it up and play it whenever they want to, you are done. However, for working in the editor, there's a problem. I'm going to switch the light on and then hit escape to jump out of the play in editor. And then I'll jump right back in. Choose play from here. Notice the light is already on. That's because the last state of the material instance constant was set to on. This is not something you have to worry so much about if you just got a level that you're going to package up and send out to other people with UDK so that they can play it on their end. When they open up your level, the light will be off as long as your material instance constant's default value is set to off, which it is in our case. In the editor, it could be a little confusing and it could get in the way of certain tests if you come in and that thing's already on. So let's take just a moment and we'll set up a separate Kismet sequence whose sole purpose is to switch the light back off. So back here inside our, our Kismet sequence, I'm going to right click and create a new kind of event. This will be a level loaded event. It's a very useful event. Basically, when the level loads up and you're getting ready to play, you can have any action that you want to take place at the very beginning of the level plugged into this guy. What I'm going to do is grab the set vector parameter whose vector value is currently black. With that selected, I'll press Control C, Control V. We'll move this new copy over here, and when the level is loaded and visible, we're going to set our material instance constant to black. That's all we've just done. It's very quick and easy to set up. We just said at the beginning of the level, turn the material off. So now let's test that out. Choose play from here, and the light's off. I can turn the light on, jump out of the level, jump right back in, the light's still off. So it's just a way to kind of keep everything all at its nice initial state. Now, just one more time. I just want to make sure you understand. When you are building this level so it's something that you can just kind of you know package up, send it to people so that they can play it, they will not experience that problem. That's something strictly for the editor. However, we now have our finished light switch. So go ahead and save your level, and then we will move forward from here. Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs>